there's something else which I noticed, um, which a lot of people are starting to talk about, which is this. Um, Tokyo University Economics Department, which is looking at data associated with the um, the waves that have happened until now. Each one of the waves from the f where this is the third wave that we've had in Tokyo, they've all been four or five months apart. And given that this one is now ebbing, um, the predicted by any model, by you know best and worst cases, all of them still predict predict now that the next peak is likely to now come to Tokyo at the end of July, i.e. in the middle of the Olympics. And there's a suggestion that by extending the state of emergency by two weeks, it could actually um, dull the uh, peak of the next uh, wave, which is undoubtedly going to come, and will undoubtedly be in the middle of the Olympics uh, in the end of July, which no matter how big the next wave is, the fact that Japan will be, that Tokyo is going to be probably in the middle of another wave at the time that the Olympics is held, makes it look increasingly like a really dumb idea. The other thing is that this is all data based upon, of course, the assumptions that, for example, um, over 65 year olds will largely be vaccinated before the Olympics, but most of the rest of the population will not. Also summertime, so some people pointed out on Twitter that, you know, people will have their windows open, there'll be better ventilation and so on. Um, these are things that are thought to contribute more to uh, less transmissions, but there again, you know, it still happens and there was still a, a wave in the middle of last summer. Um, but what's not being really uh, counted is um, that we're going to have uh, over 100,000 athletes come to Tokyo. Um, or basically, I think the numbers are going to be, I forget the exact ratios, it's like 70,000 athletes and the support staff and VIPs will basically come to a total of over 100,000 people. The government's uh, approach to this is going to be that they are going to ask these people to voluntarily um, stay in their accommodations and the training venues and the competing venues and have a bubble where basically only Olympians will associate with Olympians and they won't, you know, please do not go to Roppongi and go drinking and partying and doing other things that people do in Roppongi. Um, behave, uh, stay in your dormitory and at the Olympics and, uh, you know, and based on the assumption that all Olympic athletes are extremely well behaved, um, dignified people, um, that they will not be, uh, in spite of coming from 200 countries around the world, that they, that they will uh, not be bringing in or changing the um, predicted numbers of cases that we're going to have in Tokyo, which will be going through another peak another of, of another wave at that time. However, um, just in case, the Olympics are providing uh, 160,000 uh, condoms to athletes um, uh, based on the data that apparently 75% of athletes during the Olympics will generally, according to statistics, get it on at some point. And so, you know, yeah, again, given uh, I mean, what happened in the Rio Olympics and so on, and, you know, nothing wrong with that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's part and parcel of the Olympics, but basically... The idea that all of the Olympians are not going to like, probably, if not before, certainly once their events are done, that they're not going to be like sneaking out and going to Rapongi and, uh, you know, going around the girls who know the names of all the ships in, in Yokosuka. <laughs> I've met a couple of those. Uh, you know, people are going to going to interact. And uh, yeah, there's going to be, it's kind of funny, the, the reaction to the story that they're handing out all these condoms because 75% of them have sex. There were two reactions to the comments of this on Nichan. Um, half, the first half of the comment said, oh, I'm going to start working out so I can become an athlete. <laughs> A lot of internet lonely guys on here. Uh, the other half uh, said, um, yeah, if people are bonking, presumably that would be considered a close contact. Um, and, and would that be a coronavirus risk? Which, yeah, I mean, you know, they don't have to be doing that for it to be a risk. But again, this just looks increasingly like a really, really terrible, um, bad idea. Um, in, in every single way.